And if we're going to make any progress in astronomy over the next 10 or 100 years, we're going to need better telescopes, better satellites, all sorts of instrumentation. And that's going to be a formidable challenge in many ways. To help us talk through some of the challenges that are facing us and some of the work we're doing here at ANU about that, it's a great pleasure to have uh, Naomi Mathers, who's an engineer here at the Technology Center, Advanced Instrumentation and Technology Center here at the ANU. So welcome, Naomi. Um, what sort of people and skills are we going to need to drive progress in astronomical instrumentation and space instrumentation, do you think, over the next 10 years? So the sort of projects we're looking at with the Giant Magellan Telescope and some of the, the satellites are really large, complex, multidiscipline systems. So that means we need mechanical engineers, optomechanical engineers, we need computer scientists, we need systems engineers to bring all of that together, we need really good project, project management, um, some pretty good accounting. Um, so really, it's, it's everybody who makes this uh, very high precision instrument give you the science you need. And how does that interact with scientists like Paul and myself? That's actually one of the greatest challenges, getting, getting the, the science requirements, but actually being able to realise on that. So the engineers have to be very good at understanding some of the science, but also feeding back to the scientists what's possible. Because as we do research in engineering, we come up with new technologies, new materials, and new ways of doing things to help you do your science better. And, and so we're not in your part of the building, and we're in our part of the building, we never mm -hmm. talk. We actually work pretty collaboratively to oh, build most, it. most definitely. And that's, that's becoming more and more important. So the square kilometre array, um, the Giant Magellan Telescope, these are international projects. So it's not just in our building, um, but you multiply that nationally, globally. So we really do need people who can communicate um, and also communicate with the, the, the community and the next generation to, to bring them through so we've got the skills. Are there enough people out there with these skills? Is it easy to find people who have the communication skills and the project management skills and the technical skills and can talk to astronomers? Um, I wish we had more. Um, I, think, I think as we're bringing the students through working on projects, it's really giving them the hands-on experience that makes the difference. Um, students who are problem solvers, not just um, technically brilliant, but we want them to be able to think and be creative. So it's definitely a challenge, but we've got them out there. We've got a talented group. So let's talk about some of the details. Behind us, we have this big thing that people will see is called the <laughs> Wombat Extra Large Space Simulator. Why would we want something like that here at Mount Strong? So we actually need it for both the astronomy and the space activities. For the astronomy, we, so the, new, the high precision instruments for astronomy are now often cryostats. So they work at cryogenic temperatures and in vacuum. Um, space systems work in the same environment. So we have to prove they work. So we need a, a thermal vacuum chamber, which is what we call a space simulation facility, to prove that these mechanical systems can work in these really, really extreme environments. So one of the interesting things we've talked about in this course is how, in order to make telescopes, the next generation of large telescopes work, we need to correct the atmosphere with adaptive optics. And so that's something we're developing here. Yes. But quite to my surprise, we're actually using that to do things that uh, are not directly related to astronomy now. No, no. So how, what are we doing with this uh, technology? So one of the things, once you correct for the, for the atmosphere, astronomers see the stars more clearly, and we can see space, space debris more clearly. So we can see much, more, uh, much smaller pieces of debris, and we can see them, we can track them more accurately. So this is really important for spacecraft operators, um, so that, they, that if there's going to be a collision with a piece of space debris, they can get a warning system, so that we can tell them to, to move the satellite out of the way. At the moment, because we can't see it accurately enough, they often just leave it there and cross their fingers. See what happens. Yeah. So we don't want to get a, a gravity the movie type no. situation. No. And are we doing this all on our own? or Most uh, definitely not. So, so we have this, we're doing this cutting edge research. So we've partnered with um, one of the companies we work with on the mountain, Electro-Optic Systems, and also with companies around the world, Lockheed Martin, Optus um, Satellites, NASA, the Japanese, because satellites orbit the whole globe. So this is very much an international problem and an international collaboration. So we have our new cooperative research centre um, based up at Mount Stromlo. Now one of the other things I know we're interested in here is microsatellites. Yes. We've talked in this course about things like the uh, James Webb Space Telescopes. <laughs> if you have six billion dollars burning a hole exactly. in your pocket, that's one way to do things. But most of us don't have that much money no. sitting around. No. And also, 
20 or 30 years worth of design time. Um, so can you tell us a bit about what these microsatellites are and some of the challenges involved in designing them? So one of the challenges is to fit all of the systems you want and all of the science you want in a very small platform. One of the advantages is that they're much cheaper to build, much quicker to build, and they drive innovation. So as we're seeing electronics be miniaturised, we're seeing a lot more computer processing, some of the new photonic systems, we can do the same science that was done on a larger platform on a much smaller platform, within the limits of optics. Um, but these are great for universities. So Australia is actually building three of these microsatellites, or CubeSats as they call them, little 10 centimetre by 10 centimetre by 10 centimetre, a standard that can be multiplied like Lego blocks. So it's, a, it's also standardising satellite production, which brings down the cost. Great. Great. Well, thank you very much. My pleasure.